Good afternoon, White Plains. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for taking a few minutes um, this afternoon to spend a little bit of time with me and uh, appreciate it. And whether you're watching now live or you're watching later on, thanks for, for tuning in. I'm going to give a couple of seconds for folks to jump in. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Hopefully you're having a nice day. Good afternoon. Okay, um, I do want to do have an update for you today. Uh, just to, uh, so you're aware, we'll be doing at least one more Facebook Live this week um, with uh, with Q and A. So uh, you'll have the opportunity if you, if I don't answer questions that you might have today, you can send them in, and we'll definitely um, get back to you. I'm planning on having uh, the next Facebook Live on Friday uh, at noon. And you can send your questions in. Uh, you'll see the, the email addresses here um, in, in the Facebook Live uh, description of today's event. And uh, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Many of you uh, reached out to me over the weekend and hopefully uh, was able to answer some of your questions. And, I, and again, I do want to take uh, the moment to thank you all. I know, um, I know Friday's announcement to move into full remote for this week is a real hassle. Hassle is not even the best word. It, 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 it's, it is such a disruption. It is uh, so frustrating. I, I know that. Um, I, I want to thank you in advance, number one, uh, for those of you who reached out for your kindness. And uh, even, even when sharing your opposition uh, or your recommendations or thoughts and feelings, um, I do want to thank you for, for your kindness. And, and quite frankly, um, it's, it's so nice to see that when folks are disagreeing uh, but, but are still kind to each other. Um, I, I want to thank you for all the comments that you put on social media and making sure that they're not, um, you know, uh, that they're not unkind. I think that's important. I think it's important for our kids. I think it's important for us uh, to be able to have disagreements and um, even in the social media context and be able to show our kids that uh, we do so in a, in a kind and respective and caring way. So thanks for that. And believe me, um, you know, uh, being kind doesn't uh, isn't uh, negate the fact that there's a ton of frustration out there, and I share it. I share it with you. So what happened Friday? Um, you know, there, there were a lot of um, uh, questions about, and, and, and frankly, rumors about why I made the decision to move us into full remote for this week. Um, I did it because of the number of incidences of positive co cases of COVID-19 that we had erupting in our schools on Thursday and particularly Friday, and that were negatively impacting our children um, and our faculty and staff members with regard to quarantine and disruptions in school. Um, that was on the tail end of the week following Thanksgiving. And my hope, and I could be wrong, but my hope is that by providing this type of a, uh, I've been calling it a fire break, um, that we'll see the cases of COVID-19 coming into our buildings begin to abate after this week. and. Well, I'd love to say go away. I know they're not going to go away, but perhaps be back to the levels that we saw prior to Thanksgiving. That might not happen either. Uh, but we, I, I figured that uh, I, we should try this. Um, I know, I know how disruptive it is for for our kids. I know how disruptive it is for our families and hard it is on our teachers and administrators and support staff members. So I am sorry for that. Um, we are, I, I fully intend and, and we, we fully plan to come back to in-person hybrid instruction on Monday, the 14th. That's the goal. Um, the goal is to be able to continue hybrid instruction uh, as long as we can until we can come back all together. Um, that's the goal. Uh, putting us in and out of remote is, is by no, no stretch of the imagination something that we, that we want to be doing. And, and I know you know that. And just, just know that anytime we make these decisions, I make these decisions, I'm not doing so lightly. Um, it, it is not. It is certainly not the place that I want to see our tigers, and I, don't, I certainly don't want to cause you any more frustration. So as we move forward, um, I'll be sure to uh, try to continue to keep us in in, in full uh, uh, hybrid learning, so our kids are getting into school, imperfect as it is. Um, we know that we're going to be contending with micro clusters, maybe not this week, maybe not next week, but at some point in time in the future. And uh, what that means is uh, we, we are going to have to make sure that we are set to be able to conduct testing uh, on, on our in-person school population. That's uh, faculty, staff, administration, students. 
um, everybody uh, that, that comes to school on a, on a daily basis in person. Uh, depending upon the designation, whether we're orange or red, uh, we would have to starting with about 20% of our in-person population over the course of a month. You saw um, that we sent home consent forms uh, to, to ask for your permission to have your child included in that pool of, of uh, tested individuals. Um, many, of, uh, many folks have chosen not to, be, not to do that. Uh, we certainly understand that, but if you change your mind, uh, please let us know and uh, we'll be happy to add you to that pool of uh, test screened and tested individuals as well. Uh, in terms of illness, what are we seeing? We're, we're seeing people get sick and, and you're seeing it too. Uh, we're seeing children get sick. Uh, we're seeing faculty, staff uh, and staff members get, get ill. Um, and uh, we're doing our best to try and keep those situations out of the school building so that they don't impact our children coming in. We're not, what we're not seeing is, which is great, is a spread in the facilities. But it doesn't mean that that doesn't impact our ability to offer in-person instruction when we have contact tracing and quarantining that takes place when we do have positive cases. The one thing that I've learned over the last week that I really want to stress with moms and dads and guardians is if you traveled or if you were in a situation where you may have been exposed, let's say you went to a gathering, a larger gathering or something of that nature, and you're not feeling well, the adult as a parent or somebody in the household isn't feeling well, please make sure that you um, are, are either seeking counsel from your healthcare provider or um, keeping your child home until you know what's going on at home in terms of illness. Um, I know nobody is sending their children to school um, knowing that, that they've uh, been exposed to or maybe contracted COVID-19. I know no one's doing that on purpose. But so, so you understand, one of the biggest challenges that we have is when a little one, when a tiger arrives, um, then finding out one, two, three hours later into the school day that that child, someone in the child's home has tested positive for COVID-19. That's a real challenge for us. I know that we're not going to be able to, to know every case and we have so many issues of uh, folks who may be asymptomatic. All of that's true. But if you've traveled, if, if you went to a gathering, if you did something outside of the ordinary and you may have exposed yourself, and certainly if you're feeling like you're not yourself, you're feeling ill, um, please think about that before we send our, our youngsters into the buildings. Um, and the same goes for our adults if you're, if you're not feeling well. And I know everybody's doing their very best to try and, and make sure um, that we're keeping COVID-19 to the extent possible outside of our school facilities. That's the name of the game. How do we, how do we get into school more often? Get into school more often by keeping these numbers as low as we possibly can and making sure um, that we're doing our best to, to, uh, to, to stop the spread um, in our community so that it doesn't spread in our schools and, the, and vice versa. Um, folks had asked, uh, are, is, is, this the, is this the beginning of a, of a holiday pause? No. Uh, th this right now, as I mentioned, is a, is a fire break. I, I, we want to be back. We want to be back in the buildings uh, on Monday. We want to stay in the buildings. We want to bring more children back into the buildings. But how can you do that? Well, we can do it by, by looking at um, areas and spaces that we have in our classrooms. And we're going to talk about that with the reopening committee again this week on Wednesday. And that video will be posted uh, for you as well. So we're not moving backwards. We're moving forwards. And, and I know that this week um, seems like, wait a second, what's going on here? Are we moving backwards? No. Uh, we want to continue to move forward. To our, to our children, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about, uh, about putting, you, putting you through this in terms of switching your schedule this week. Um, and to our faculty and staff members and our administrators, you know, I, I can't say thank you enough for, for the hard work that you're doing, but please know that, that every one of you is appreciated and we're grateful for how hard you're working. You're working harder than you ever have before. Moms and dads and guardians, you're working harder than you ever have before. Kids are doing things that they've never done before. But just know that we're grateful for everybody's efforts and we're trying to figure out the best ways that we can possibly support everybody and all of their unique needs going forward. None of these decisions um, comes without some type of a negative consequence one place or another. We're doing the best that we can to try and mitigate that and we will continue to do that, um, knowing full well that we won't always get it right. But I think the message that I wanted to leave with you today um, was that we are, we are pressing forward. We're moving forward in, in, a, in, a, in a manner that's uh, sticking to our health safety requirements. We're going to be looking for ways to overcome any additional cases or the so-called surge that we might, might see as we move closer to the, the winter holidays. 
Um, but just know that you know we're going to continue to try and do our very best to get our children into school in person and keeping everybody healthy and safe uh, as we move through the, the winter months. Again, no easy answers. I'm certainly hope, very hopeful with the advent of uh, vaccines, um, very hopeful with the availability of, of more testing coming our way, um, and very hopeful with everybody continuing to work together. Um, but as we move forward, I know you're going to have questions, and uh, I want to be able to answer all those questions for you. So please uh, continue to send them in and uh, make sure that I answer those um, latest, I think, Friday, unless we do something uh, sooner, and keep you posted. I'll keep you posted on what we're seeing in the region with regard to potential microcluster designations and the requirements that they'll bring to public schools. At the end of the day, we all want to be in school. We all want to be with our kids, and we're going to keep pushing forward and keep working to do that in the, in the safest and healthiest manner possible. Thanks again, everybody, and thank you for jumping in this afternoon. I'm going to just real quick scroll through the, the feed and see if there's any questions that I might be able to answer um, that, that you put in there. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> uh, question is, why, why shift to full remote this week um, when we aren't in the yellow right now? Uh, Cuomo's, uh, the governor's changing uh, the rules regarding keeping schools open. Yeah, I think I maybe touched on that a little bit. You're right. We're not technically, we have not been designated, not technically, we've not been designated a, a microcluster yet, which is good. Um, but based on the numbers and what we were seeing at the end of the week last week, my hope is that this will, will help us moving forward. Uh, when, uh, well, classes are happening right now, school is, the question is when are schools open? The facilities will open back up for our children on Monday, um, this coming Monday, the 14th of December. Uh, you don't know the positivity rate in schools if you aren't testing and notifying parents at 5 p.m. on a Friday is a huge issue. Um, thank you very much for your feedback. Appreciate that. Um, and certainly uh, we'll take that and, and uh, learn from it. Um, thanks again, uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Ms. Keating. Appreciate it. Uh, in the future, can the school district try to give families earlier notice, uh, the late notification for the transition to full remote left families without time to arrange childcare? Yes, absolutely. Again, sorry uh, for that. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly uh, as, as soon as we possibly can make any, um, give you any notification on a change to schedule, we absolutely will. Question is, is that 100% that they will reopen on Monday? Well, nothing's ever 100%, but yes, we plan to reopen our school facilities for our children on Monday. Um, thank you. If, if when, we can return, uh, when we can return to school, are we allowed to keep children home the week before the holiday and switch to remote for a few days to avoid any exposure just before the holiday break? Thank you very much for your question. I know a lot of parents and guardians are thinking about this, not wanting to be quarantined um, during the, uh, the holidays. Moms and dads, uh, you can absolutely make any decisions that you think are going to be in the best interest of your families. Uh, any day that you think um, you, you think that's the, the right move for you and your child, just uh, reach out to your child's principal uh, via email or telephone call, and we'll be happy to support you uh, as you make that decision. Question is, why do teachers and staff have to report to school? Aren't they safe to sit, safest at home also? Um, great question. Thank you very much. I know that's on the minds of many of our faculty, staff, and administrators. It's important for us to be here. It's important for us to be in our school facilities. This is where we work. This is where we have our tools to be able to support our children. I know that doesn't that does not make everybody happy. I understand that. And believe me, I wish I could make everybody happy. Um, but it is important for us to be in our facilities. We're doing what we can to make sure that um, the facilities are as safe as possible. And uh, there really isn't any reason for um, right now for our faculty and staff members not to be in the facilities today. Thank you, uh, Ms. McCann. I think I may have answered that. Uh, doesn't make sense from a safety perspective yet. It, actually, with the reduction in the density in the buildings, there really is no reason why our faculty and staff and administrators can't be in our buildings today. But I appreciate the sentiment. I, pre I respect the position um, and uh, certainly hear you. Thank you. I think that's all the questions that I have in the feed right now. Um, again, we'll be back, or I'll be back on uh, at least by Friday uh, to answer any more questions that you might have, and certainly feel free to reach out at any time. 
I, I appreciate uh, everybody's uh, questions and I appreciate everyone sharing your thoughts and your recommendations and your ideas. And I can tell you uh, that the Board of Education, the reopening committee also appreciate all the feedback as well. We're doing uh, everything that we possibly can and, and we're gonna continue to um, do our very best to, to keep our facilities open for in-person learning as long as possible. And, and hopefully that's for the remainder of the academic year unimpeded. Um, so I really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe, uh, stay well, and stay WP proud. We'll see you soon. Have a great day.